Right, you are. Good evening uh, once again for those who have gathered here at Millefleur on this warm and snuggy Wednesday evening. It's a pleasure to have you all here at Millefleur for what is the launch of Sylvia Hunt's uh, What's Cooking, of course, the republication of what is an outstanding cookbook that has become synonymous with the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Permit me to acknowledge the presence this evening of our very special guest of honor, His Worship, the Mayor of Port of Spain, Alderman Joel Martinez. Your Worship, thank you for being with us. Good evening and welcome. As well as Mr. Christopher Sembrano and all members of the Sembrano family, uh, particularly, of course, Diane Sembrano, who is with us, and we're very pleased that she's spent some time relaxing in Trinidad and Tobago for a bit before this evening's program. And for all those who are in one way, form, or fashion influenced by the good works, the culinary artistry, and the contributions of an icon of Trinidad and Tobago, from the standpoint of being the lady that hosted what can be considered the first cooking television series in Trinidad and Tobago and on Trinidad and Tobago's television channel. In the event of any form of notice of an emergency from the hosts here at uh, the National Trust here at Millefleur, we kindly ask that in an orderly fashion you make your way to the front of the building. You'll be under the custody of the security until such time as it is safe to return into the premises. Those, of course, who are here with video cameras, I trust that you will ensure that those are safe if you have to leave the room uh, in the event that there are any challenges. So without any further ado, I invite to deliver words of welcome a gentleman whom I have come to know over the last two to three months simply because he's spent more time in Trinidad than he has in Barbados, making sure that all is well. Please welcome Mr. Christopher Sembrano. Age. I forget this one. Okay. So, Your Worship. The Mayor of the City of Port of Spain, Mr. Joel Martinez, distinguished guests, members of the media, relatives, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is with great pleasure and pride that we welcome you here this evening to relaunch to the relaunch of Sylvia Hunt's cooking. It is a reinvention of a classic. My late grandmother spent her lifetime collecting and creating recipes that represented the cultural heritage of our island. That lifetime of work culminated in her publishing three cookbooks in the period 1985 to 1988, the last one being published just after her death in 1987. On August 31st, 1986, she was awarded a Hummingbird Medal Silver for community service and home, home economics by the President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Her work celebrated the fact that our cuisine, like our people, is a rich melting pot of cultures. She was a pioneer, an innovator, a presenter of culinary skills, a businesswoman, a community leader in the city of Port of Spain. She taught generations of Trinbogonians her recipes. Her focus was on using locally grown ingredients in recipes that allowed homemakers from all walks of life to prepare good, affordable meals for their families. She documented and created uniquely local recipes, Creole food, you know, of, of the New World, that represented the fusion of our Afro, Spanish, French, and English cultures. She would go on to incorporate our strong Indian heritage into some of her later works. Her goal, through the unique character of our food, was to preserve the history and legacy of our people. 
That melting pot included the customs of the Caribs and Arawaks, which brought us cassava, the Spanish, who brought us pastels, the French with thyme and sive, the English with our jams and jellies, the Afro-Caribbean with cuckoo and callaloo, and the Indian, Portuguese, Chinese, Lebanese, all who brought their rich dishes and customs and infused this into what is truly a, a diverse Trinbogonian multicultural cuisine. It was extremely important for us at this time to, to reintroduce our late grandmother's works to Trinidad and Tobago, particularly to the new generation of Trinbagonians to fulfill a promise to her to ensure these works were passed along. As this generation of our family comes to maturity, century again old, right, we felt it extremely important to update and introduce these works and pass along the wealth of knowledge and skills of our elders. The preservation of our cultural heritage, we believe, is essential to keeping our integrity as a people, and we wish to ensure it is passed along from this generation to the next. We are extremely excited to share this new and updated edition with you. It is colorful, it is vibrant like our people, but it still stays true to the essence of the original works. It is sure to become a classic for the younger generation to use as a reference. A list of locations for paper copies of the book can be found at sylviahuntcooking.com. It will soon be available in ebook form on Amazon and Apple Books. We're extremely excited to be able to share this limited edition print with you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher Sembrano, for delivering words of welcome and, of course, setting a bit of the context and remembrance. Um, for the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even part of the 80s here in Trinidad and Tobago, families gathered at homes to chat about our history. Spattered amongst the conversation might be a little bit of commerce or bacchanal, but the elders in the residence would normally bring the conversation back to center. Either we're not from that, or words to these, well, enough, or something that basically brought us back to respect, dignity, and order. 7 p.m. also had an order in Trinidad and Tobago. You knew where you had to be. It was not caught in traffic either heading to the west or down south. It was caught in front of the television, having consumed supper and ready for panorama. <laughs> but what was a marvel, in fact, was the lead up to the primetime newscast every evening. And Sylvia Hunt, with a television series at home with Sylvia Hunt, commanded prime time leading presence in Trinidad and Tobago from 6.30 to 6.59 on a Monday evening. But moreover, I'm not sure there's many of a television channel today that could have boasted of having the majority of adults who have televisions <laughs> looking at your cooking series. It just doesn't happen that way anymore. But as the elders would say, enough about that. It's important to learn, appreciate, and understand who was this lady? Was she just that lady with the refrigerator, the stove, and loads of prepped meals in front of her? Where did she come from? Why was she doing this? And what were we supposed to learn from it, apart from how to swizzle callaloo? 
Well, for that information, you have to turn to the family. And so we are in the midst of family this evening, appreciation of good work, and appreciation of our history, and good family relations. It's with pleasure, therefore, that I invite Diana Sembrano, Mrs. Sembrano, to share more about Sylvia Hunt. Diana. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Diana Sambrano, daughter of the late Sylvia Hunt. I'm here to share with you a few memories about the essence of my mother. My mother, Sylvia, was a leader and an entrepreneur. She was amongst the first female members of the Port of Spain City Council and an alderman for Northeast Port of Spain. She owned her own store, Mighty Fine Novelty Products Limited, a dress and floral shop, a training center on Upper Frederick Street, Port of Spain. Here she delighted her customers with pastries and other delicacies that were made with love. Mighty Fine founded in 1947. It became a household name in the 1960s to the 1980s. My mother was not only a good parent, but a very good role model. She was a student at Bishop's Ansi High School and was awarded a diploma in home economics. She taught us by her life, not only how to dream, but how to organize and work hard to make our dreams a reality. But also, more than that, my mother was a very generous woman with leadership abilities, with culinary industry, and creative, to say the least. She adopted many young women from the orphanage, too numerous to count, and she would train them with life skills in art, craft, and cooking. In 1986, she was awarded the Hummingbird Medal, silver. This was an extremely great achievement for her, and a moment in time which we would forever be proud of. Memories of my mother included her passion for our culinary traditions and her weekly commute to her television show at home with Sylvia Hunt. That sponsorship by Consolidated Appliances allowed my mother to spend many hours researching the foods of our land and sharing that passion with her viewers. As children, we spent many hours with my mother, supporting her with her many business endeavors and her community work. We canvassed for her in her city politics. We tried out her many recipes we supported her with her many orders for her customers. We spent time with her at TTT Studios and at the best village festivals at Queen's Hall, at which she was a judge. We, with, we were with her in her factory and at home, working to make jams and jellies, or helping with large catering orders. We also have fond memories of Christmas lunches where the entire, entire family, even those from far off and abroad, traveled travel back to her home 
to congregate together and break bread. She was truly the embodiment of a matriarch, a strong woman, a gifted leader, a teacher, mother, and wife. Her home was also filled with students and adopted children. She was first and foremost an educator, teaching not only the culinary arts, but also sewing skills. As she prepared students from the John Donaldson Technical Institute for the national exams. In her latter days, she wrote and published three books, Sylvia Hunt's Cooking, A Proud Legacy of Our People, Sylvia Hunt's Sweets, and Sylvia Hunt's Menus for Festivals and Daily Use. This published collection is a small part of the thousands of recipes she created and collected in a lifetime dedicated to her country's cooking heritage. We will always remember my mother Sylvia and her contribution to the lives of not only her husband, her children, both maternal and adopted, and her grandchildren, but to all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Thank you, Diana Sombrado, for sharing a lot about Sylvia Hunt, so that when friends visit your home, and this publication holds pride of place in your kitchen, you will now be privileged to be able to say, do you know who this woman was? Etc., etc., etc. That's the good stuff about Trinidad and Tobago. We're able to tell stories about Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. And now, we're able to capture those stories and hold them in treasured memories called videos. Some use them as WhatsApp messages, etc. Others post them to a place that has a synonymous name with a book. But these videos were inspired to some extent by what we were accustomed to enjoying in our country. Watching TV was a national pastime, apart from cricket, pelting mango, <laughs> and a few other sporting activities that shall remain nameless, considering we're around the Queen's Park Savannah. <laughs> The media, both local and regional, acknowledged the contribution of Sylvia Hunt and Sylvia Hunt's cooking and produced an edited video that has more about her contribution. So let's have a glimpse at that now and pardon me for walking in front of the screen. Have a look. She was a household name from the 1960s to the 80s and from her, the audience learned how to prepare all things local. Sylvia Hunt was born to Miriam and George Dryce on 31st December 1912. Both parents passed on to her qualities that would see her displaying leadership abilities as a founding student of Bishop Anstey High School. She was always eager to share and teach others what she had learned and displayed the gifts of industry and creativity to all she met. On 24th April 1935, Sylvia married Elliot Vincent Hunt and together they had eight children. 
In the late 40s and early 50s, Silvia was an elected member of the city council for northeast Port of Spain and later served as alderman for two succeeding terms. As a businesswoman, Sylvia Hunt was successful in good times and bad times. In 1947, she opened Mighty Fine Novelty Products on Frederick Street, a dress and floral shop, patisserie and training school all in one. She was a true patriot and in all endeavors insisted on using local material. Academically, she was awarded a diploma in home economics and taught at many leading institutions including Holy Name Convent, St. Joseph's Convent and the John Donaldson Technical Institute. She contributed recipes on local cuisine for many years to the Trinidad Guardian features page, Sylvia Hunt's Heritage Cuisine and Creole Cuisine by Sylvia Hunt. Sylvia Hunt's eyes were always open for new ways in which to transform our local produce. At an early age, she joined her mother in the kitchen to make her first sugar cake. The use of television demonstrations to stimulate interest in the preparation of local dishes and preserves gave birth to At Home with Sylvia Hunt on TTT, sponsored by Consol. It is obvious then that Sylvia Hunt was the first pioneer of the Cooking Channel Network. To quote from Trini Gourmet, Sylvia was the Julia child of Trinidad. Even as a young child, I was attracted to her warm, charismatic persona and soothing voice. She had a way of making every dish seem undaunting, approachable and effortless. At Home aired every Monday evening just before Panorama on TTT. Sylvia Hunt shared a wonderful relationship with the producers of the show. They provided her with objectives and guidelines with moral and business support throughout the years. With her firm resolve, she met all those requirements. Anne Winston, who was among many others working on producing the program, remembered Sylvia as a warm and encouraging person who treated the studio kitchen as though she were at home in her own kitchen. She created a warm atmosphere and everyone was able to sample what was made. She published three books, some of which are available on Amazon, Sylvia Hunt's Cooking, Sylvia Hunt's Sweets, Proud Legacy of Our People, and the third, published after her passing, Sylvia Hunt's Menus for Festivals. From the back cover of one of her books, the name Sylvia Hunt is synonymous with good cooking. As teacher, caterer, and television personality, she has, for many decades, been compiling, creating, and collecting recipes that represent the cultural heritage of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Very good indeed. Yeah. And to help you with context, I, I, I'm, I will make sure that anything that I am stating does have some level of corroboration from those who worked at TTT before me. <laughs> um, but of course, I speak of persons such as Benedict Joseph, and present with us this evening is Timmy Mora, who may have been here a short while ago, but... Ah, he's right here. Hi, Timmy, yes. And Timmy would have been one of the directors, correct? Four at home, no? No, cameraman? Definitely. So videographer, cameraman. But the TTT studio had three temples in it. A green piano, a news set, and a kitchen. And the crew loved to work <laughs> on the program that was shot in the kitchen. Someone had to taste the food at the end of the program. We wouldn't let it go to waste. And so Auntie Sylvia, as we heard, created a warm, family-oriented team spirit at Trinidad and Tobago Television just down the road from where we are. In today's world, you can't feel the warmth anymore. 
in today's world, something about the taste is different. I was quite curious just a short while ago to see that on one of the uh, covers, there are recipes for christenings. Take note. <laughs> Maybe they're different items for when boys are being christened versus when girls are being christened. But certainly, this contributes to who we are as a people. It contributes to why people come here and ask about our diversity, our rainbow style, our vivaciousness, the fact that we speak well most of the time. <laughs> and that we're always warm and engaging. But to put all that together, you now head to the world of podcasts, blogs, short videos. In fact, when I started, a half hour program was hip. Today, three seconds is hip. And if you've gone past the three seconds, you've lost the audience. But we can't lose the essence that comes with a publication and a republication such as Sylvia Hunt's cooking. And someone who has really supported Christopher and the, and the team in making sure that this event will be successful, not just for the moment, but for many, many uh, years to come, is Ms. Franca Philip. And Franca has dedicated a lot of her time and talent to ensuring that we have more stories about the essence of who we are as Trinbegonians. She is our guest speaker this evening. I give to you Ms. Franca Philip. Thank you, Wendell. That was a beautiful introduction. Nobody ever big up, so. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Samir, family. I understand that we may be family too, so we'll talk about that after. But um, just to say, I'm really happy that this book is back in print. Really, really happy. Can we get a round of applause for that, that this book is back in print? You know, um, as Wendell so eloquently put it, being in front of the TV at 6.30 to watch that show was something I did with my mother every week. And I really, really, for many years, loved Miss Sylvia Hunt. So that when I got older and I was living away, I wanted things of home. And I used to wonder, God boy, I know Sylvia Hunt have some books, I can't find them. What's going to happen to her legacy? Well, anyway, I eventually got my hands on these babies here, all right? They never leave my house, except for when I'm taking them. But, you know, I paid like 50 pounds or something like that for these two books. <laughs> and I was not, I, could, I can't complain, you know, because these books offer so much sustenance when you're not in Trinidad. You feel like you're closer to home. I used to spend a lot of time cooking from these books, inviting people over to my home, especially my non-Trini friends, to show them, well, this is what Trini food is like. Because, of course, you know, food is the best. And, you know, it, it's really interesting that so many people, like my Indian friends from India, who would taste the food would ask, what is that seasoning? Of course, we were able to share our heritage in common. So that was really, really good. And I used to post on my, unfortunately, now defunct blog, Can Cook, Must Cook, about these recipes and the fact that Sylvia Hunt was such a crucial part of our Caribbean culinary landscape. US-based writer Patrice grell yusik as well as Ms. Trini Gomi, have, you know, in, have compared Sylvia Hunt to Julia Child. The difference is that Julia Child introduced Americans to French cooking. Sylvia showed us who we are in our food. I would also say that this cookbook it's pretty much like the joy of cooking. You all know that cookbook? That cookbook has been out since 1931. This is about the 12th or so edition. And you know, when you, when you look at it, you think, wow, we don't really have enough that says to us, this is us. So again, I want to say thank you, Chris. Thank you, family, for bringing this book back to life. So think about it this way. When you think of Sylvia Hunt, who would you compare her to? 
It's a Julia Child only. I could think of people like Delia Smith in the UK. If Delia Smith said, and today I'm using John's custard. Three days later, the supermarkets are totally out of John's custard. So powerful was that message. So I could think of Alice Waters as well in the US who taught about that food from that farm to table eating that Americans embrace so heartily and that we are now embracing in our own culinary style. And of course, in the Caribbean, Miss Norma Shirley from Jamaica. All of these women had a certain kind of credibility, a trustworthiness, a straightforwardness that endeared us to them. You know, when you think of, of, of I will call her Auntie Sylvia, when you think of her, you think of gentleness, but you think of firmness too, because you know she ain't taken anything, right? So you think about that, the trustworthiness. And it's really important that that is a, that is a, 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 kind, of stand, a kind of stand pose for everybody. Once you're in a profession, people have to trust you to be calling you an expert, right? Right. Could you imagine if Sylvia Hunt was doing her thing today? Could you imagine her following on the internet? Could you imagine how much merch, books, things like that she would sell? Could you imagine her Instagram feed? She would be a star way beyond these shows. She would conquer the Caribbean, she would conquer the Caribbean diaspora, and then she'd conquer the world. Because you know, trainees, when we support in something, you're there, right? So because of the incredible technology we have today, there's a lot of people creating content. And I can imagine Sylvia having somebody walking with her Saturday morning in the Namdevko Farmer's Market if she was alive today, <laughs> filming her for something that she was going to be doing that would appear on her Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter feeds. Social media now has made food really accessible to us. You know, I'm sure that there are people here who have already posted to their feeds that they are here and posted covers of the book. When I posted a little teaser online, God, people were just inboxing me. Can I get one? Can I get one? And I told them, yes, Metropolitan Bookstore, paper-based bookstore, just go and buy it and it will be online. So you all are already on to a hit, all right? But you know, a lot of the goodness about social media is that it's so immediate that some of it just scratches the surface. And in some cases, some of these content creators around food seem to lack the understanding and the depth that we need to have to educate people about our food. You know, there are even some content creators who seem to lack the understanding of ethics for what they're doing. You know, they neglect to tell their followers, well, I'm getting paid to do this, so if I tell you it tastes good, it's because they're paying me to do so. And this is something that would never have passed in the time of the people I called. They were straightforward and they would tell you, no, it's not tasting good because, all right? So I'm just urging the younger people or the people who are coming into food and who wanna capture things, pick up this book. When I pick up the book, read it. Cook from the book. Because plenty of people who post on about food, they realize they can't cook. Because they, the way they talk about food, they realize they don't know what they're talking about. So yeah, pick it up. Find something unusual. Look at page 78. Page 78, there's a recipe for topi tambo. Fish, cheese, and topi tambo pie. Try making that. Or if not, go to page 24, where they have crab matiti. Try something different, right? And you know what you have to do too? You're coming into food, you want the next generation to understand who we are. Taste the food, understand the ingredients, understand the textures. Get a, get a feel for the language of food, because guess what? Oh good, that real nice, oh wow, that real lush does not help us, okay? So we really, through this book, this book I think is gonna create a new generation of people who are serious about food. We are going to beg Sylvia Hunt, we are going to make her great again. Sorry to use that term, but we are going to bigger up to the world. So I want to tell everybody, go out there, post on your Instagram, post on your Facebook, post everywhere. Sylvia Hunt is back. Thank you.
Yeah. <laughs> Hit the spot. Just like a good sugar cake, Benny bowl, guava jam, pumpkin balls, etc. Hit the spot. Thank you very much, Frank and Philip. Oh, there's nothing wrong with M S H G A. Those are easy letters to put together. Make Sylvia Hunt great again. You're safe with that. <laughs> it's when you use the first letter of the alphabet after the M we run into. A... <laughs> Sorry, they might be hearing us. Anyway. <laughs> also, part of what is coming out of what Frank has said is that you didn't go to the nearby pharmacy or supermarket to purchase jams and jellies. You went to your neighbor. Because every home made something. Because the pockets weren't like today. What you worked hard for was to ensure that you could provide sustenance to your family and friends. I had the good fortune as a child growing up in Woodbrook and the galvanized fence between my home and the neighbor just happened to be the galvanized fence between my grandparents' home and a Chinese parlor. And we were, on, we were the fortunate ones in Woodbrook that on a Sunday, all that I needed to do was knock on the galvanized fence and a hand would bring a plastic bag over with ice. And that's how we had cool drinks for Sunday lunch. A bag of ice over a galvanized fence, home to home. You probably ask why. Well, there was only an ice factory and everywhere was closed on a Sunday. Context. So you had to make good stuff at home, synonymous. And so everyone was involved in getting to a cookbook or knowing someone who had a recipe in order to share it at home so that you could have something when your neighbors came over to chat. Yes. Fast forward to the future. About three or four Sundays ago, Christopher and I were seated in a restaurant and we were speaking about the format of today's proceedings, and we arrived at the next generation. And we asked the question, what about them? When this is all over and we leave, what will the younger generation, that doesn't mean that you're not young, what would the younger generation take away from this? And he simply said, I should talk with Megan. Simply said that, and our event coordinator and I were there and we simply asked, who's Megan? <laughs> well, we got the story of who Megan was, but then it just seemed like a natural fit that the legacy, the gift, the talent had not skipped generations, but actually had continued from one generation of the family of Sylvia Hunt to the next. And so Megan Sembrano is our next guest speaker. Family in the house, but the future is also in the house. Please welcome Ms. Megan Sembrano. Good evening to all invited guests and thank you for coming to celebrate this special moment for my family. I am Megan Sombrano, the great-granddaughter of Sylvia Hunt. Despite never meeting her, my great-grandmother played an integral part in my life, and this happened through spending time with her daughter, my grandmother, Diana Sombrano. I spent most weekends by my grandmother, where I learned from a very young age how to cook, bake, and sew. My grandmother also ingrained in me the art of homemaking. So every morning when I woke up, I had to make my bed and open the curtains and windows in the house, whether I wanted to or not. Most times, however, I did not. 
This part of my upbringing taught me discipline and provided me with skills I needed to function as a young adult in society. Who remembers the COVID-19 lockdown when all food establishments were shut down? If it was not for my grandmother, I would not have been able to feed myself. One of the recipes I learned to make from the cookbook was acra. I made it one Christmas in Barbados for my family, and they loved it so much that my uncle's wife, Michelle, asked me to make some for her Christmas lime. The acra was loved by the Bajan guests, and before I could finish getting ready for the lime, they were all done. The star of the show, however, was the homemade dipping sauce. We forgot to buy sauce to dip the acra in, so I searched the fridge for odd ingredients to put something together. When the acra was finished, the guests began spooning the sauce all over their Christmas food. <laughs> Growing up in my grandmother's kitchen taught me how to be economical and how to make something out of nothing. The skills I learned became so ingrained into my life that when someone asked me if I could cook, I always look at them with a puzzled expression, thinking to myself, everybody can cook. <laughs> I also grew up in Cascade, in a house that belonged to Sylvia Hunt when she was alive. On my way home, I would pass around the savannah and admire the big houses on the left-hand side, or what is known as the Magnificent Seven. I'm honored to be inside one of them right now. These houses were around for decades, and with intention and some nurturing and maintenance, they will be around for future generations to enjoy. This is how I feel about my great-grandmother's cookbook and her recipes. I intend to spread the knowledge not only to my future family, but to my Trinidadian community, so that our heritage and her memory can live on and be enjoyed by future generations to come. Thank you. Megan, your title is very apt and correct. You are the great granddaughter of Sylvia Hunt. You've done a great job, and of course, acknowledging how the history of Granny's presence and Great Granny's presence and Mom and Dad's presence in your life make a fantastic difference to the fact that the acra sauce is going to become another item to add to the the next edition of the cookbook, or they're going to ask you for it in some way, form, or fashion. So congratulations and thank you for sharing your sentiments and memories of Sylvia Hunt. We are honored this evening, ladies and gentlemen, to have as our very special guest the first citizen of the city of Port of Spain, His Worship the Mayor Alderman Joel Martinez. And Your Worship, you are serving at a great time. Whilst some may want to focus on where there are problems during your tenure, a moment like this only comes to those who specially deserve it. To share in the history of one of the daughters of our country, who ironically would have served in the very same corporation that you are now the head for, and for you to be able to bring some context to that. So on behalf of the Sombrano family and Sylvia Hunt's family, we are honored to have you with us this evening, and we invite you to bring greetings as our first citizen and mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, Alderman Joel Martinez. Let me say good evening to the Sombrano family and to all the invited guests here this afternoon. What an evening, what a place, what a time. We are in the midst of family. I heard that earlier, at home. This building actually was once a home of the first mayor of Port of Spain, Enrique Prado. And I am sure a lot of cooking took place here. But as I stand here to represent the city of Port of Spain, it must be remiss of me if I didn't acknowledge Alderman Sylvia Hunt. As someone who was a true national treasure, 
someone who brought love to many family homes, someone who was a national awardee of the Hummingbird Silver Medal, someone who was probably before her time, understanding that wherever you go anywhere in the world and you hear about the food or the gastronomy of Trinidad and Tobago, you know that it started somewhere, somewhere on TTT many years ago, when this humble woman who pride herself in feeding people, generations later, we can celebrate her success through the relaunching of her national treasure that she had given Trinidad and Tobago as a gift. When you do something like that, and you give the world the opportunity to feel good about themselves, because who doesn't love to eat? Everyone. Who talks about food wherever they go? When you think about it, entertainment today is food. Anything that you do, and if it's not good, you will know. I have met people around the world, many countries, that said that they had or heard about the opportunity, some, some had the opportunity to taste the food of Trinidad. And everyone would tell you it was fantastic. And we should pride ourselves in the fact that what we have is really a mixture of all the different cultures that came together and then put into one space. We have the Afro, the Spanish, the English, the Indian, the Portuguese, the Lebanese, the Syrian, and the Chinese. All of that, all the ingredients that we have, a mixture of all the different races and cultures that happen to, to land right here in this beautiful Twin Island Republic. And we had this woman who took the time to demonstrate to us how it could be done. And years later, we now understand and appreciate the value of what this woman did for us. Let's give her a tremendous round of applause, even in her absence. We are bringing Sylvia Hunt back to life. We are bringing the treasures that she offered us, the opportunity for us to relive and to enjoy what she produced. It is my absolute pleasure to celebrate the launch of Sylvia Hunt's amazing cooking book. This volume is actually, well, a reprint of Sylvia's first cookbook published in 1985, which became a vital part of every kitchen in Trinidad and Tobago. As I've been told, the new edition is just as fantastic as the original, if not better. According to Patrice Grell Yusik, a local writer, this culinary guide can be considered a blueprint for the essential Sunday lunch. And Sunday lunch was always considered the best lunch. That was when you celebrated food in a house. That's when you really invite people over because you wanted them to get the best of the best. One of the exciting things about this revised edition is that it includes additional recipes, I understand. And uh, some, some of the family favorites, such as mouth-watering macaroni pie. 
and delectable poultry stuffing, and these recipes have been tweaked to perfection for the new release. And I have no doubt that they will be just as beloved as the classic recipes. Referencing an article I read in the Newsday, it was Sylvia's wish to have her book, her work continue, and she entrusted her daughter, Diane, and her grandson, Christopher Sambrano, to help fulfill the dream. Well, I was able to meet Diane this afternoon and Christopher, and it was a pleasure for me just to be in her warm company and to hear the stories of the great late Sylvia Hunt. The result of this beautiful new edition of this classic cookbook with new recipes and updated content that will delight homes and cooks and foodies alike. Cooking has actually become a very popular hobby, hobby adopted by the young ones of this great nation now. So Megan, you're in business. The thing about it is that COVID-19 created a lot of restrictions, but COVID-19 gave us some nuggets. So although we went through a crisis in our country, what did it do for us? It helped us to understand where the stove is and what, a, what, and, and what a pot looks like. Because we only knew it from eating out of a box sometimes in some restaurant somewhere. And using your ability and local recipes to create something. I have heard where my daughter in Canada cooked doubles one night. Imagine that. I never thought she could cook. I thought she just used to study, <laughs> you know. But that is what happens to people when you're put in a position. And we, at, as Trinidadians and Tobagonians, should be very proud of the fact that we have one of the best foods in the world. We have a beautiful space to celebrate it, but we have the best foods in the world. And sometimes we take it for granted. Sylvia Hunt did us a justice by giving us that fairy tale to work with, and we just didn't realize it. Well, today, we will realize it if we didn't do it then. So, I'd also like to mention the admiration of all of us that we share her relentless dedication, her work ethic, it, took a, it must have taken a lot of hard work and passion to become a truly great chef. And Sylvia embodies that spirit every day in what we do. Her talent is matched only by her determination to always improve and push herself to new heights. You realize the amount of stuff this woman did she was an entrepreneur, she was an alderman, she was a counselor, she, was, she, she, she had a program every Monday afternoon on TTT, and more. She had a family to look after. Wake up people and realize that that was a true habit of who we are many years ago, and we should try to emulate that today, even more now when we have an opportunity to share and understand the value of what this great woman get, did for us. And so without further ado, let me give a huge, let, let us all give a huge round of applause to Sylvia Hunt. Diane and Christopher and Megan and the rest of the family and everyone here who is involved this afternoon, let us keep the spirit 
of Trinidadian cuisine alive and well. And let me say thank you to the family for sharing this gen next generation with this valuable treasure that was hidden from us for some time. Thank you for unveiling the treasure again for all of us. My sincerest appreciation on behalf of the Council of the City of Port of Spain and the people of the City of Port of Spain and, in, and, and, and our citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. My pleasure. In a good space, you might as well remain standing because it's not always appropriate to be toasting seated. And on, uh, on an occasion such as this, it would be ideal that we are on our legs for the toast. And without further ado, I'll invite Christopher to move the toast and assisted, of course, by His Worship the Mayor. So I'd like to raise a toast to my late grandmother, Sylvia Hunt. We are really, really proud of what she's done and I'm really happy to reintroduce her works um, to all of you and to most importantly, the next generation, to Sylvia Hunt. Sylvia, so Sylvia Hunt, yes. Mm. By the way, this is uh, <clears throat> one of our favorites and it's not alcoholic, so there you go. And it's from the cookbook, yes. Ah, right. it's, in a, it's in the cookbook. <laughs> so one of those unusual things. Yeah? So ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a presentation of floral uh, flowers, of course, a bouquet to Diana Sambrano. And we will invite another of Sylvia's granddaughters, yes, yes. Yeah, Patricia Hunt, to uh, make the presentation of flowers to Diana Sambrano. Family. <laughs> So this presentation is my mother for the hard work that she's put in to keep in her mother's work alive. So thank you. Hmm? Okay. Oh, we need it one more time. Yeah, so you just need the flowers in the podium. Yeah, in the front. Okay, sorry. Great, thank you all. Please be seated. Okay, so we're near the end of the formalities, but fun fact, you'll be surprised how you're always connected to people and history by just perhaps two or three individuals onwards. Miss Patricia Hunt, who just presented the floral arrangement to Diana Sambrano is a granddaughter of Sylvia Hunt, yes, as well. But we happen to share the great fond gift of music, um, having been members of one of the young groups in Trinidad and Tobago at the time that performed for presidents and governors general and events in churches and then made it to the United Nations and to Canada and did a few records, etc. So not just the culinary talent exists within the Hunt family, but also the gift of music. So life at home must have been fun between food and music. Another part of who we are as Trinis, because there must be a fet somewhere in the mix, right? There has to be. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we are bringing the formalities to a close, uh, we invite first to, at this moment, Mr. Christopher Simbrano to move the vote of thanks, and then I'll come back to close things off. So, Christopher, the mic is yours. Yeah. 
each hell of a thing. Okay, so first of all, this has been quite a journey. Um, I guess we had a few false starts, you know, over that time, but I think things really accelerated during COVID when, when we realized, you know, actually we are all getting older and we almost lost my mom and I couldn't do this cookbook, but certainly not by myself, no clue. I'm a, you know, consumer of the, the great cooks in the family. So when we started, um, Pam and myself, we interviewed a, a few, uh, a few uh, publishers or possible options, and we arrived at Sally Miller and Aaron Brewster at Miller Publishing. And they worked with my mom over almost the course of a year and a bit to make this um, work a reality. So I want to acknowledge uh, Miller Publishing. They were a bit nervous getting involved in a Trini book on their Bajans, but we had no choice. Borders were closed, but we were going to go ahead with this. But I think my mom was in there to ensure that we stay true to our culture and, and what this meant for us. So Miller Publishing, thank you. I think one of the impetuses, for me anyway, is when the Trinidad and Tobago Publishers and Broadcasters Association gave my grandmother a posthumous award in 2019. And at that time, again, they started to ask me about that, this book and when, when we were going to do it. And, they actually produced that fantastic video tribute. And from then, that really started me thinking, okay, we really need to, to get going. So the, to the Trinidad and Tobago Publishers and Broadcasters Association, first for honoring her and really starting us on, on this journey as well. I also, I also wanted to pay a, a special tribute to Martin Superville. Um, I actually, you know, myself and my wife were into art. We bought um, some of Martin's art, and that picture is actually something that we bought from him, and he gave us this, the kind permission to use that um, on our, our book. And that, to me, embodied my grandmother and her involvement at Best Village, and I guess what we were all about in terms of our culture, and really, you know, keeping that near and dear to us. So that was really special um, there, Martin Superville. to the Norton Collection. Trying to find photographs back in the day in Trinidad and Tobago is actually very hard. And we had to go to the Norton Collection and go through their work, really, to then find photographs that were suited to this work. So, you know, that Norton Collection, they have also preserved the treasure in what they have there. And I just want to thank them. We have licensed some of their images um, in this book, and that was great. To Miguel Brown. This gentleman here visits Barbados religiously every year. He was also my history teacher. And we're just, you know, sipping, sipping drinks in the ocean in, in, in Barbados, talking. And I'm saying, look, I'm thinking about republishing this cookbook, but, you know, I'm not sure. I need some advice. He's done a few of these things, and he's, he's steered me in the right direction in terms of a number of choices that I've made. So thank you, Miguel, for that chat and for that advice. Thank you. Wendell Constantine. Um, you know, I didn't really know him really well, but Miguel <laughs> recommended Wendell. And, you know, we started a chat on his energy and his ideas and all the things that he brought out. You know, he just got me so excited. And a lot of what we have done today, Wendell had a part to play in that. And I was, I'm really grateful to have someone like that to help me through that journey. And I just wanted to say thank you very much, Wendell. Rachel Lee Him, I only met her a few weeks ago, but you know, getting through this from zero to what we have today, she really you know, helped me through that. Initially, I was gonna try and do this on my own, but when I, you know, I realized this was you know, so much, but Rachel really helped with today and getting us to where we are. I don't know where she is, but thank you, Rachel. <laughs> thank you very much. To Franca and Patrice, um, you know, Patri again, that was another pivotal moment where Patrice decided she reached out and wanted to do that article for Food and Wine. And she worked with my mother and did a lot of research to produce that article, and then she reintroduced me, I have to say reintroduced, because Franca and I actually go back a long way from Form 6 when I first met her. Um, and she reintroduced me to Franca, and again, they really encouraged me and 
gave all the ideas and Patrice in doing that, um, that article for Food and Wine also you know, served as an impetus to, to get there. Um, and then last of all, all of my family. I have to acknowledge that it's not just only the Sembranos. We have 15 cousins, you know, or Hunts, Sembranos, Wilsons, you know, and Williams, yes, Williams in, in Canada. And I'm sure I'll forget somebody. But, and mayors, oh, how can they, they're my brothers, right? So the mayors are brothers, yes. Yeah. So they, you know, um, were unanimously, when we had and came together, eventually supported this whole thing. I'm very grateful uh, for their support. So, you know, family coming together to do that. And I'm sure I have forgotten somebody and someone, but I just wanted to at least, you know, mention that this, um, Today, you know, took a lot to first to get there, and I'm really so pleased that we finally got there and fulfilled this, this dream that we had to, to reintroduce you to our grandmother's work. So thank you very much. We have recipes or in, in embodied here from the book that we have for you. So please don't run. We have a sampling from the cookbook to share with you, some sweets, as well as a well-stocked bar at the back. So please stay with us. Um, as we celebrate this. So thank you very much. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how events and activities used to take place in Trinidad and Tobago. Privileged gatherings. Moments of gold. Not a lot of people in the house, because the houses were never large enough for a lot of people. And gatherings would normally be on the tile red steps, because the varnish on the floor <clears throat> could not be soiled by too many people entering through the front door which was also a reason why the television was normally at the very end of the living room facing the steps. <laughs> so that if you wanted to watch the news, sit outside. <laughs> but these contexts that I share, really, it's about who we are in our identity. And what you have witnessed and experienced this evening is taking you firmly back to a tree of our identity. The Sylvia Hunt tree has many branches, looms large, casts a safe nurturing shadow across all who would dare to entertain others with good food. But through the miracles of family, and preserving family legacy, we are the privileged ones to have access to this publication for ourselves, our friends, our children, our children's children, and anyone who dares to sample our cooking in whatever way and ask, what am I eating? Where did this come from? I won't call any fast food outlets, etc., because it's not appropriate in this setting. But certainly we have an opportunity now to raise the bar on how we entertain, what we share, when we share it, and more importantly, who we share it with. Because food is nourishment and sustenance for our journey. And along our Trinidad journey, we've sought to erase a lot of stuff. Congratulations to the Sombranos, Hunts, and the other extended members of the family for not erasing Sylvia Hunt, but bringing her front and center to the future of good cooking in Trinidad and Tobago at home. I'm very fortunate and privileged to have been granted the opportunity to serve as the master's ceremonies this evening, and so I must extend a word of appreciation to my Robert Street brother, Miguel Brown, 
for the recommendation. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I was not fortunate enough to be in his history class because I went to the other college. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's all right. <laughs> it's quite all right. Yes, exactly, yeah. One and the same. Uh, moreover, ladies and gentlemen, there are refreshments and a very interesting word called mingling. If you haven't mingled for a while because of the pandemic, well, this evening will be the chance for you to mingle. Therefore, on behalf of this evening's hosts, organizers, and even the team here at the National Trust, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and moreover, buy the book. Good night. <laughs>